the Always Believe House. Oh, today we're going to have a rocking fun time because we're going to do Star Review 23. Ho, ho, ho. So let's get going. A magical whiteboard appears and we are going to start rocking through this Star Review. I am going to let you do one to seven on your own, okay? Because y'all have done this for three weeks in a row. Graph the lines. Do A squared plus B squared equals C squared and simplify that radical. So you should be able to do that on your own. Let's go to number eight. This is where we're going to be at a long, long time, okay? We're going to be studying quadratics for about two or three weeks. Okay, so really quickly, remember, the uh, standard form is AX squared plus BX plus C. The A, the B, and the C will all do things to the graph. Okay, so on this equation, A would be 1, B would be 2, and C would be negative 3. Remember, the C turns into the y-intercept, doesn't it? So we know that this graph will cross the y-axis at negative 3. Now then, to find the vertex, we're going to do negative fraction bar, and we're going to put B over 2A. So B is 2, A is 1. Notice there's one negative here. So 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. And that negative 1 went right here, did it? So we need two dots above it and two dots below it. While I'm doing this, let me turn the calculator on, because we're going to need the calculator for this. Okay, so I need two dots above the negative 1, which will be negative 2, negative 3. Two dots below it, 0, 1. I like having my table of values go from small to big. So that's the way I do that, okay? Now that we know the vertex is going to be negative 1 comma something, the way I had to do it when I was young was plug negative 1 in and figure out what, what uh, works. We're not going to do that. We are going to graph it on the calculator, waiting for the calculator to pop up. I do not need that window. Okay, so we're going to add a graph. Now the end, my f of x is already there. If you don't have it, menu 3, 1, or hit the tab button. And we're going to graph, uh, we're going to graph x squared plus 2x minus 3. So x squared plus 2x minus 3. Ho, 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 ho. Hit enter. We have our parabola. Okay, and remember, we're going to hit control T and get that table. So control T gives us the table, and negative 1 was the vertex. So I want the negative 1 to be right in the middle and that's the numbers I needed. So the negative 3 is going to be 0, the negative 2 is negative 3, the negative 1 is negative 4, and I'm sorry. And remember, the table of values will be symmetrical. The top two will be the same as the bottom two. So let's go back to our table. Okay, so this will be 0, negative 3, negative 4, negative 3, and 0. This is all straight from the calculator rating. In this right here, we can find our y-intercepts, our x-intercepts, or zeros, and our vertex, right? Okay, so let's graph the ordered pairs. So negative 1, negative 4 is going to be our vertex. Since this is at the bottom, it's going to be a minimum. Okay, the next dots will be at the negative 3's. This is the y-intercept. And then we got 1, 0, and negative 3 zeros. These two right here are the zeros, aren't they? And then we'll draw the parabola. It'll do something like this. And remember, the line that goes through the vertex and splits it in half is the axis of symmetry, okay? I'm going to abbreviate that with AOS. Those are the important things you need to know about these graphs. So the roots of the parabola are this number and this number, 1 and negative 3. The y-intercept of the parabola is this number. It's negative 3. Okay, the max or min, we have a minimum because it opens up. This is the bottom of the graph. The minimum value will always be the y of the vertex or the maximum, okay? The range, if we were to find the range, and let me do another color here, the range is going to go from here up in it, which is from the negative 4 up. So it's going to be y greater than or equal to negative 4. This number goes down to the range also, right? The max or the min is going to define your range. And then lastly, the axis of symmetry is going to be this number right here, x equal negative 1. Those are important concepts, and you, this is a vocab test. 
you've got to memorize what happens with those points. Okay, now then let's go through and finish the bottom of this page. So right here we're going to factor. Hopefully you're getting better at this. Okay, so we are going to multiply 2 and 21 because we can't take out a GCF. We'll get 42 and we want to add and get 13. Multiply 42, add and get 13, that's 6 and 7. And they'll both be negative. Negative 6 minus 7 is negative 13. And I'm going to put 2x on the bottom, right? This one right here will simplify to negative 3 over x, and those are my parentheses, right? x minus 3 and 2x minus 7. Ho, 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 ho. It all works out. Piece of cake. Let's go to the next one. I cannot take out a 3, can I? Because 14 won't divide by 3. So I'm going to do 3 times 24 and get 72. The factors of 72 that subtract and give me 14. Remember, I'm going to do the calculator with you on this one because this is kind of hard to get. So we want the factors of 72. So Control T gets rid of the table. Delete, 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 deletes the graphs. And then we're going to hit Tab to get a new graph up. It's 72 divided by X. Hit Enter. Then hit Control T. And we have our table. Now then we want to subtract and get 14. So subtract and get 14, and ding, 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 it's right here at 18 and 4. So you could use that table of values to get those factors, right? So 4 and 18 work, so I'm going to go back, put 4 and 18. The 18 will be negative, the 4 will be positive because I'm subtracting, and I'm going to put 3x on the bottom. The 4 and the 3x won't simplify, but I can divide these by 3. That's going to be negative 6 over x, right? So those turn into my parentheses. I have 3x plus 4, and I have x minus 6. Ho, 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 ho. And continuing on. This is so much fun. Okay, we're going to do this one. Okay, I'm going to multiply 6 times 10. I'm going to put it down here and get 60. I want to subtract to get 11. Subtract to get 11. Let's do it on the calculator. So hit Control T. Delete, delete, delete. Enter, and then 60 divided by x. Hit the tab button, 60 divided by x. Hit enter, and then hit control T. And we want to subtract and get what? Subtract and get 11, and it's right there, 4 and 15, right? So we're going to use 4 and 15. Okay, so I'm going to put 4 and 15 down. The 15 will get the minus. We're subtracting, so plus 4 minus 15 is negative 11. Then put the 6x on the bottom. These both simplify, won't they? So I can divide this set by 2, and I'll get plus 2 over 3x. I can divide this set by 3, and I'll get negative 5 over 2x. So that will be my parentheses. 3x plus 2, and 2x minus 5. The more you do this, the quicker you get. You may not even need to use the calculator to get the factors. Obviously, the bigger this number is, the harder the problem because the more factors you can possibly get. Okay, good job on that. Let's go over here. This is huge. Y'all got to be able to multiply these lickety split. You've got to be able to multiply them quick. I'm going to show you some shortcuts on this, okay? So we're going to do, I'm going to draw three blanks here, and I'm going to multiply my first terms. 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Multiply the last terms. Negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. Now then, my outside and my inside. My inside will be negative 6, and my outside will be positive 6. Eventually, you'll keep these in your brain, but they will eliminate, won't they? So this is a difference of squares, right? So the answer will just be 4x squared minus 9. Okay, now then, on this one, I'm going to put it at the bottom, and y'all got to do this quick, because we're going to switch equations, and you've got to be able to multiply this square, okay? So we're going to do 4x minus 5 here at the bottom twice. Draw your three blanks. And then the first times the first is 16x squared. The last times the last is plus 25. And what happens to the arches? You're going to get negative 20 twice, aren't you? Okay, so if I multiply this and double, that's my middle number. So 4 times 5 is 20, double 20, you get 40, but
but it's going to be a negative ending. So real quickly, let's do this without using the bottom here. 4x times 4x is 16x squared. Negative 5 times negative 5 is plus 25. Then multiply 4 times 5. You get negative 20, or 4 times negative 5. And if you double the negative 20, you'll get the negative 40x. Y'all have got to be able to do that very quickly without showing any of those arches or anything. You just got to be able to go for the problem straight down to the answer, okay? Okay, the next one. 3x times 3x is 9x squared. Plus 2 times plus 2 is plus 4. Now then I'm going to multiply. 3 times plus 2 is a plus 6. If I double the plus 6, I get plus 12x. That's You've got to be able to do that really, really quick. Let's go to the next one. X times X is X to the second. Negative 7 times negative 7 is plus 49. If I multiply the two terms, I get negative 7X, and that would double if I did the arches. Both arches would be negative 7X, so if I double that, I'll get negative 14X. Y'all have got to go through this quickly and get these, okay? Or it's going to be real hard next week. Let's keep going. We'll do one more set. Okay, the way I want you to do this is get rid of the positive exponents or, or negative exponents or rewrite the square or the uh, fractional exponent. So on this one, we're going to put 4 over 6, and then we're going to have x squared, x6, and then y5, y3. Now that I can go straight through and get the answer, I'm going to have 2 over 3 as my number. There's more x's on the bottom, so x to the 4 goes on the bottom. I subtracted 6 and 2. There's more y's on the top, so I'm going to have this, and it's going to be 2. So 2y two squared over 3x to the 4th. Oh, okay, on the next problem. Draw the square root. The 27 goes in. This turns into the number in front, and this is your power. Now, then, if you were to just type in 27 to the 2 thirds on the calculator, it will give you the answer. The cube root of 27 is 3, and 3 squared is 9. So this is going to end up being 9. And just plug it into the calculator, okay? The next problem, okay? I'm going to do it a different way here, okay? I'm going to show you how to do it like the math textbook says you're going to do it. So you would divide 8 divided by 6 on the calculator. You would get 4 over 3. Then you're going to write down the x and subtract negative 2 minus negative 6, y, and negative 3 minus 5. Then you're going to get 4 over 3x, negative 2 plus 6 is 4, negative 3 minus 5 is a negative 8, and this would turn into 4 over 3, and then the x is on top, the y is on bottom. Either way you want to do this, you can do it that way, okay? If you do it this way, make sure you do the integers correctly, okay? If you do it this way, the math's a little bit easier because they're all positive. Either way you do it, you've got to get good at it. And then lastly, 24 to the negative 2. This turns into 1 over 24 squared, and 24 times 24 is 576. So 1 over 576. Piece of cake. Oh, 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 oh. Hopefully y'all have learned through this, okay? Hopefully you're getting better at these. Stop recording. Stop recording. There it goes. Okay, done. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Remember, you are amazing. You were created to do wonderful things. And you are awesome.